And it is our 500th live Super League commentary on Sky Sports. Nine years ago we began, and here we are at number 500. It only seems like five minutes ago that we were in Paris. But we're here in Headingley tonight, and it's a glorious evening. Now then, the Martin Gleeson transfer has made the headline news today. What else has happened in the Super League this week? John Keir will be the man in the whole hot seat from next season. He signed a two-year contract at the KC Stadium and will take over when Sean McRae heads down under to coach South Sydney. Meanwhile, after suffering six straight Super League defeats, Widnes have drawn up a shortlist for their coaching vacancy and could make a final choice at Tuesday's board meeting. St Helens looked like being without Paul Sculthorpe for at least a month after the Saints skipper limped out of the defeat by Hull with a hamstring strain. You can't come on a worse time, obviously, with, with players out, you know, missing, um, you know, through, obviously through suspension and, and injuries. Um, you know, but it's, it's part and parcel of the game and, you know, unfortunately, you know, I've just got to get back as quick as I can. It could be all changed for the fixture list for Super League 10, with Rugby League bosses all set to recommend a change in the controversial system whereby the previous season's top six must play each other again in the final six matches. Rules which greatly favour those that missed out on the playoffs last time around. Given that next year two clubs will be relegated at the end of the season, we believe it's inappropriate to continue with this current system. The ultimate decision does rest with the Super League clubs. We're going to record scrum half Luke Robinson from his lone spell at Castleford after Adrian Lamb was injured in the win over Bradford. Robinson will be back in action for the Warriors tonight, ironically, against the Tigers. And Huddersfield have announced the signing of Brisbane's Michael De Vere on a two-year contract from next season. The Aussie centre will arrive in January, despite suffering a serious knee injury in training down under this week. Well, the Leeds fans have had this date ringed on their calendars all year. Revenge is on their minds. But you can't tell that to the Leeds players or indeed their coach, Tony Smith. Well, they wrecked Leeds' hopes of the Challenge Cup in March. They beat the Rhinos 56-10 in Super League in April. They are short of experience, though, as they bid to avoid their third defeat from the last four away fixtures. But nothing is ever beyond St. Helens. This is the way the two sides line up. Mathers at fullback, then it goes Cummings, Walker, senior by. Sinfield is the captain at standoff. Danny Maguire moves to scrum half. Forwards, Bailey, Diskin, Ward, McKenna, Lauatiti and Poaching. And on the bench for the Rhinos, Burrow, McDermott, Adamson and McDonald, the coach, Tony Smith. Now the Saints, fullback Wellens, it's Cardner, Albert, Gilmore and Funati, Talau and Hooper. Forwards, Fossard, Cunningham, who captains the side, Mason, Edmondson, Fasavalu and Wilkin. And the subs, Bennett, Bybee, Hardman and Roby, the coach is Ian Millwood. So they emerge to the Saints, beaten by Hull, 34-6 on Saturday. They lost second place to Hull because of that defeat. And Kieran Cunningham leading them out today. It will be fascinating to see how they respond, not only to their patchy form of late, but also to the news today that Martin Gleeson moves to Warrington. Now here come the Rhinos looking to humiliate the Saints the way that they were at Nosey Road on April the 30th, 56-10. They conceded nine tries that day. But I just wonder how significant it is that Dunaman has dropped out of the side at the 11th hour and Rob Burrow remains on the bench. And Sinfield moves to standoff and he will partner Maguire in the middle of the park. The match referee is Carl Kirkpatrick. We're just about ready then. It's 500 not out for us here on Sky Sports. And this should be a real treat as St. Helens get the game underway and Leeds defending the end where all the sun is, but there is the first mistake. Wellens' kickoff sails out on the full and Leeds will have a penalty on halfway. And Maguire takes it quickly. Oh, and the referee blew the whistle and Maguire tapped the ball after that and he is pulled back. Well, I'm sure that he blew the whistle. He did. You. You can see him blowing the whistle there, he should have been away. Well, a controversial start to this game.
Carl Kirkpatrick. I'm sure he has definitely blown the whistle. OK, he hadn't made the signal. But he blew the whistle. And according to the rules, as I read it, and all the, and all the players, I know he's got to give the mark, but you can't help the fact that was quick thinking from Danny Maguire. Well, it wasn't, remember, a quick restart that he was looking for. It was a penalty, and the mark had to be made. And that's the only reason why he pulled Maguire back, I'm sure, that he hadn't actually raised the hand. Anyway, Leeds are in a position of strength here with Danny Ward. And behind him, Matt Diskin. Here now is Sinfield. It's with Maguire. Maguire gives it to McKenna. He bounces off Funati. Gets the ball wide. Marcus by for Leeds. What a start. What a start for Leeds. Our 500th commentary. We nearly had the fastest try in Super League history when Maguire was pulled back by Carl Kirkpatrick. All he did was delay the inevitable. And Marcus Bai with his 17th touchdown of the season. And that is the start that St Helens did not want. Superb three-quarter play. McKenna, outstanding. But what about the pass from Senior? He's spotted out behind him, completely blind. This is the error from the kickoff. Well, and far too deep. Remember, St. Helens will have the advantage. The sun is in the eyes of this Leeds outfit. But watch the pass here from Senior. McKenna Senior. Five finishes it off. They go absolutely bananas here. And they've every right to be. That was sheer quality amongst the three quarters. Marcus Bai, he loves playing for the Rhinos just at the moment, tries in four consecutive matches, and the touch judge was uh, confident there wasn't a foot in touch there by Marcus Bai, who's very tight to the touch line, and Sinfield adds the extras. Leads off to the flyer that they wanted. They lead here by six points to nil. Very close indeed. How close is that? Millimetre, that's about it. But he's got away with it. He knows away to the line, but he knows very well the Chris McKenna and Keith Senior's involvement was outstanding. Well, it's Wellens' turn to kick off again, and this time he just didn't hit it quite so hard. And Marcus Bai takes the tackle from Edmondson. He's looking to really get this game off and running quickly. They're looking to play the ball quickly. They're looking to. Put St Helens on the back foot very early on. Well, I mentioned before the kickoff that the one thing St Helens have to do is be very strong in the forwards. Fozard and Mason, they were superb in the opening period of the Super League season. They have to recover that form. Tackle count continues, even though it was touched by St Helens. He did not go for the ball in the tackle. This is the last tackle here now for Leeds, this set of six. It's with Maguire, and there's the kick downfield. In between Funati and Wellens, Wellens takes control, gives it to the big winger from Samoa, and a good chase from Leeds, led by Ward and Matt Diskin. Good hit by the prop forward, Danny Ward as well. Made sure that he kept underneath the neckline. Good impact. Saints then with first use of the ball in hand. Gardner will play it to Cunningham, who'll find Fozard, who drives it forward, Nick Fozard. That's the sort of run Eddie that I was speaking about. And they're playing the ball very quickly. We know that St. Helens can be very dangerous if they do that. If they control the dummy half situation, especially Kieran Cunningham, don't write them off. OK, the six points adrift. Right, let's go down to Dave Hadfield for early thoughts from the press box and the man of the match. People who saw Leeds drop that surprising point at London last week tell me that the man who was really badly missed was Matt Diskin. He's back in the side. Another man who missed it was Keith Senior, already seen signs of his quality. It's been a bad, bad week for St Helens, and they need a really epic performance from the one really, really big gun in the side. That's Kieran Cunningham, so they need something very, very special from him tonight, I think. Oh, what a ball round the corner. It didn't reach the first man from Lauatiti, but it got to McKenna, and Leeds playing with great confidence here. Already, we've only had five minutes. They lead 6 0. Maguire, bullet pass, it's Marcus Bai again. And he has Keith Senior on his inside. And Senior stands in the tackle, gives it to Maguire. Oh, Leeds get a 10 point lead. Senior did ever so well then. And Maguire gets number 26. And his 50th try for Leeds on his 65th.
appearance and only his 39th start. What a star this young man is. Danny Maguire. They played the short blind side. They caught St. Helens yet again. They're having all sorts of trouble at St. Helens on this right-hand side in defence. Kept his goal, but how cool was this from Celia? Come on, come on, support. And Danny Maguire, he's running hard this season. So is this fella. But look at the strength here from Celia. Being able to just keep his body upright. He knew that they were coming. And it was Danny Maguire that finished it off. Super play on that short line side. And it's something that Saints have had a problem with for quite some weeks now. Their right hand side in defence just falls apart. Danny Maguire, he has got the Super League record of 28 tries in a season well and truly in his sights. And Kevin Sinfield has the Pokes in his sights. And Leeds have a 12 point advantage here at Headingley. Super Saiyan, look how they pull the man in. Use the dummy runner right across the face of Senior. That's what confused the defence. And when you think about it, Kieran Cunningham was the only one that was really on that blind side in a defensive fashion. What a start for the Rhinos. Well, that, Phil Clark, is one of the understudies of our 500th commentary. What a start. It's fantastic, isn't it? When these two sides last met in April at St. Helens, St. Helens built up a 28 point to nil half time advantage. Such as the speed of the year uh, of which they played the opening stages of the game. We also look at uh, Leeds' performance last week. I think you could certainly sum it up by saying there were a series of missed chances which they have capitalised on here today. They want to turn any break into a try as they're trying to do right now. They are, and here is Diskin. And Diskin has got Maguire, and Maguire's going to get another. Well, that now is 27 tries. He's too short to pull New Love's record in the Super League of 28 in the season. That was set in the first year of 96. But Danny Maguire is now right on his heels. What a start for Tony Smith, Ian Millwood. He's been hit by a whirlwind. And the name is Maguire. St. Helens' defence just absolutely falling apart. Take nothing away from it. Wonderful work from Diskin and Poaching. And then the offload from Danny Ward was quite superb. They tried to get back in numbers, but the offload there, the man who knows only one way toward the line. Notice how the way that Diskin took it the left-hand side, spun around, gave them the opportunity. Slow St. Helens defense on the left-hand side where the market should have been. If there's no one at home, you take the four. Incredible. Incredible start by Leeds. And Danny Maguire with two tries. That's 27 for the season now. We could see a new Super League record on this special night. And Sinfield adds the extras again. 18 points in eight minutes. Maguire's the man on everyone's lips. Martin Gleeson, the man on everyone's lips in the St. Helens crowd. And after the way St. Helens played early in the season to take the Challenge Cup, they must be absolutely perplexed and confused almost as much as this St. Helens team just now looks perplexed and confused. Here come Leeds again, and that's a high shot from Fozar. And the referee has given the penalty. Saints cannot get hold of this ball. Unbelievable. Right onto the neck. Didn't get the face, remember this season. All the Super League coaches have made an appeal to the referees that that sort of tactic into the windpipe has to be stopped, and rightly so. Look at this, 90% of the opening 10 minutes has belonged to the Leeds Rhinos. Saints are very much on the back foot, they trail here, 18 points to nil. Diskin spins the ball to Sinfield, and St Helens have yet to get into Leeds' half of the field. It hasn't started well. This is Lauatiti again. It's been a horrible start for the St. Helens. The one thing that they needed was to try to just slow this 
wonderful offloading that Leeds are producing so far. They can't do that. We often say, get amongst them, get into their faces. Leeds have only made six tackles, Steve, in the opening 11 minutes of the match. And here's a real test for Wellens. It's spilled out and Albert has it. And he does well to get back over the try line and into the field of play. Brian Noble is watching this. The Bulls and Yeston Harris have a date here in August. You're not quaking in your boots, are you? Absolutely not. Sometimes you think, <laughs> you know, you're in the water be sinking. Oh my God, it's one of those nights, and it can happen. This is only the second time they've touched the ball. Leeds have started really vigorously. You can see in their carries and their tackles that they're going in to bash people. They're really trying to win the ground. They're really trying to take the game to St. Helens. St. Helens will be just looking, looking for one play, one set. They compound their own sets with a mistake at the other end, you know, with a kick-off and then with a penalty. They just need some field position. They're just needing something to hang the hat on now. And Brian, with your Great Britain hat on, you must be delighted with the form of the likes of Keith Senior and this young man, Danny Maguire. It's really refreshing, isn't it? A while ago, a few years ago, we didn't have many people to select from. I think there are 30 or 40 players now banging really, really hard on the GB door. And um, Danny Maguire and Keith Senior, obviously, Keith's been there a while. Danny's probably the new kid on the block. And Matt Diskin isn't having a bad season either. The hooker there at dummy half, and he gets it to Danny Ward, and uh, Fozard was high again. Richard Mathers with a long kick downfield. And the chase from coaching, Gardner managed to get to it, but then gets tackled by Ryan Bailey. Well, it was an awful bound for the winger, Eddie Gardner, and it's a good job that it was only poaching there, no disrespect to the big second rower, but he's not the fastest player out in the field. It would have been someone like Danny Maguire, maybe there'd have been a lot more trouble. And I agree with Brian Noble, what St. Helens have to do now is just graft slowly but surely, get it back into this game. We know they've got the quality, but they have not got the field position as yet. This is Gilmore. They do have danger all over the field, despite the fact that the likes of Long and Sculthorpe are not out there. And Mickey Hyam, I don't think anyone should underestimate the great loss that Mickey Hyam has been to this St Helens side. But here comes Marcus Pye! And Marcus Pye has got Maguire! It's going to be a hat-trick for Maguire! It's going to be a hat-trick for Danny Maguire! And he will equal Paul Newlove's record! It's a special night for Maguire! It's a special night for Lee Drydos by the looks of things. St Helens have got no answer to this. Paul Newlove in 1996 with St Helens got 28 Super League tries in a season and Danny Maguire has got it with eight rounds to spare. He has levelled the record and the mood he's in, he could go on and score three more. Very poor kick and chase. Watch this, Marcus Pye, they hang off. You've got to make sure you go as a one unit in a straight line. And soon as Marcus Pye gave the standoff, he knew it was try number three, hat-trick time for the number six. But Ian Milwood will be furious. And again, we see our lead attack. The right-hand side defensively for St. Helens. You've got to wonder what Ian Milward can do. Darren Albert, not noted for playing in the centres, more at home on the wing. The glee edged on the face. Sheer horror deep inside. Ian Milward, surely. Kevin Sinfield to try and make it four from four for him and establish a 24 points to nil lead, which he does. The third hat-trick of Danny Maguire's year. And remember, when we saw him at Witness not too long ago, he equaled the Super League try to the match record with five. The way he has started here, he could be rewriting the history books big style. And so could Leeds. What do St Helens do, Steve-O? What can they do? Well, in positioning, and they'll be hurt even more if they don't go as a unit. We saw there, you can't go into a kick and chase situation with a dog's back leg. You've got to go as one. If you are going to go at a different angle than straight, you go around on the umbrella fashion. They didn't do that. They failed to do that. 
The referee has wiped the title count down here, and Leeds have another set of six. Let's get down to Phil Clark. Phil, I mean, this is just incredible. There's nothing you can do any Leeds are red hot, and St. Helens are not, it's as simple as that. And uh, the possession again now, just going in Leeds' favour. If you want to win the grand final, you need to be able to score 100 metre tries in Ripley. What I mean by that is, if you get the ball near your own try line, you need players with the pace and ability and awareness to be able to put the ball over your opponent's line at the other end of the field. We've just seen a perfect demonstration of that. Marcus has by his kitchen catch and uh, struggling on those words. And then the return of the support player, Danny Maguire. You know, he's got three tries, he probably deserved four with that early issue that uh, went against him. Phil, Matt Diskin back in this Leeds outfit, he makes such a difference, doesn't he? He does, but I think they've all up the game, haven't they? From the uh, drop point last week against London, I think they're all determined to prove to themselves and their coach that they're better than what they did last week. Sometimes a drop point or maybe even a loss at this stage of the season can actually do you favours when it comes to getting to Old Trafford. That was a slack pass on the inside, and here come the Saints in the shape of Mike Bennett, who is tracked down by Mathers in the end, right on the halfway line. Well, maybe that is what they needed. Wigan are ahead against Castleford after a quarter of an hour, and would you believe Luke Robinson is grabbing the headlines there as well? He has scored a try in his return for Wigan against the Castleford Tigers. Not surprisingly, Eddie, he has got a big point to prove, hasn't he? Well, for the first time, we'll see just how Leeds can muscle up in defence here. It's with Hooper, and Hooper spins it wide to Talal. There's danger whenever this fella gets the ball. Overrun him. Gardner went ahead of the pass. It was good play by Willie Talal, who's been off form over the past few weeks. The winger should have been way back. This is excellent centre play. See how he sucked Cummings in, did everything right. Ian Millwood very upset indeed and it always amazes me you know that these wingers why on earth they don't just concentrate and keep him behind the ball handler Leeds drew 36 all in London last weekend 72 points in a match it made it Super League's all-time highest scoring draw and uh, that was of scant consolation I can tell you to Tony Smith when he heard that news yesterday this is Chris McKenna now for the Rhinos Diskin waits a dummy half. Just think, if St Helens lose here, and it looks odds on at the moment, they will, and Wigan beat Casper tonight, Bradford beat London, St Helens could end the weekend fifth in the Super League table. That's how it is, isn't it, in the Super League? But we saw last week against Hull that the St Helens defence, they're just not moving up, they're hesitating, they've got no confidence whatsoever. Mothers. High, high kick under pressure he was, and Wellens was under equal pressure, but he dealt with the bomb brilliantly. Well, the crowd was screaming that Richie Mathers was taken out, but the man was committed. Yes, it was oh, Hooper. Great defence there. Danny Ward and Matt Disk in the hooker, they are putting themselves about. Well, TT with the tackle on Talao. This is Cunningham. Here is Keith Mason. Oh, that was high. That should have been a penalty. Here's Lauatiti again, it's Marcus By and Darren Albert holds him down. Maguire waits at dummy half, leads on the toes every time they're in possession of the football. This is Bailey. Well, they've been badly done to St. Helens there, it was a high shot missed by all the officials. Well, now they have a penalty lead. Interference at the play of the ball. I think they'll keep the ball alive. When they're running hot, 24 0. No, the signal is coming off from the bench, and Tony Smith take the two. Well, that surprises me. Tony Smith said, take the two. Immediately, he sent the kicking tee out. The fourth penalty Leeds have received. And Ian Millwood. Well, we have Brian Noble up here alongside us. I don't know whether you've ever, Brian, been on the end, the wrong end of a scoreline like that, but what thoughts go through your mind when it's about to go 26-0 and we're only, what, midway through the first half? Well, you're looking for a little break. You're looking for something to slow the play down so that your pivotal people in your team can talk about what we need to do. They'll not be thinking about winning or losing, they'll be thinking about thinking, you know, fixing the little things. It's, uh, I've been on the back end of some clobbering, certainly at St Helens, and, you know, Yorkshire can remember, and you just have to talk about getting back to the thing you started to play the game with, your game plan. 
realistically, you're not going to talk to your players about winning the game. It has to be something special and, and you know, a really special effort for something like that to happen. I don't think that's going to happen already so early out in this game. But they'll be talking about knocking some points off, getting back into the game and making a competition of it. Does it surprise you, Brian, that uh, the way that the same challenge defence this season early, they were superb, they just dropped apart? Confidence plays a huge part in rugby league. And, you know, the confidence to make plays, to know that the mate next year is making that play as well. When you have a shaky start like Saints have done, that confidence may appear there, but the body language shows that they're a little bit sensitive, they're a little bit fragile. And let's not take anything away from Leeds, they started superbly well. The quality of their skill and the vigour of their running has troubled Saints right from, from minute one, second one. 21 minutes gone, 26-0, Leeds ahead. Scoring a better than a point a minute. And Laura Titi, as Saints coach Ian Millwood, just tries to juggle his pack a little bit, just tries to find the answer to stopping this Leeds onslaught. It won't be easy because the way that Matt Diskin is controlling things at dummy half is quite superb. Now then, is that play on? Is that the little is that the little break that St Helens were looking for? It's the handover. Danny Maguire caught in possession, lost the ball, and it's a knock-on, so it's the turnover to Saints, and they are 30 metres away from the Leeds line. Now, can they produce something here? Cunningham finds Fozard. Fozard is greeted by Lauatiti and Barry McDermott. Cunningham waits at dummy half, they're 20 metres away. Hooper, Hooper gets the ball to Talau, he had to reach forward for that. This is the first real test of this Leeds defence. Hooper! Hooper! Well, if there's one man on the same side, he's it, Jason Hooper. Cunningham! Cunningham looking to pinch one himself! And he's hauled back over the try line by the Leeds defenders. Last one for Saints. Goes wide, and this is Talau. And that's another knock-on by Francis Cummins. St Helens will get a second set of six. And they were desperate for it, weren't they? It was in no man's land was Francis Cummins. He knew he had to take the gamble. Eddie Gardner was on the outside of him. A plenty of experience, of course, Francis Cummins. The point I was making, Eddie, is the way that Matt Diskin, and you've got to take the hat off to their coach, Tony Smith, is because what he's doing is going one way, bringing it on the other, because he knows that St. Challenge first and second markers are not working hard. Wellens, and he finds Talau. Leeds defence having to muscle up here as Cunningham gets it to Bybee! And muscle up they do, they hold him up. Ah! Cunningham waits, will he try and pinch one? No, gets it away! And Wellens, I think, might have it down here. Wellens might have the ball down. Referees handed it on to the video referee to check. No. It's short. It'll be a play of the ball. Nowhere near the line. This is no try. At a time when Saints were desperate to get on the scoreboard. No try. Surely they can't give this. Let me see better here. No, he doesn't get it down. For the video referee tonight is Steve Cross. No way in the world is that going to be given. Goes on the leg of Maguire, then on the arm, then the dragging back, and then when he does it, terra firma, it's in the field of play. This will be the play of the ball. Quite obvious to everybody. Well, it's obvious to you, Steve-O, but the man who has to be convinced is Steve Cross, the video referee. What does he say? He agrees, and the tackle count resumes. And here is Mike Bennett for St Helens. And that's the last one. Can Leeds stand firm again? Back it comes to Hooper, a bit of width. He fires it to Wilkin. Wilkin gives it to Dallin Albert. And it goes wide to Funati. And he hit the post before it went down. That's so terrific that. Leeds defence again. Great slide in defence. They knew the ball was being flicked out wide. Full credit to Marcus by. He tried to stand tall, he's a big fella, this fella. And Archie really went to him. Now then, can Saints concentrate? 
This is where they've been caught quite a few times, is that they just lack moving as that unit in that defensive line. But Adamson has come on for Ali Lau Titi. This is Diskin, and here is Adamson. He attracts three to him. Matt Adamson. Substitute in the defeat at St Helens in April. And out of contract, by the way, at the end of this current campaign. Maguire, and here's Adamson again. Oh! Wow. He was well, hit was... by Talao as well. There was a trailing arm trailing from Barbie. Arm well. Trailing arm right into it. Nothing wrong with the Talao one. But Bybee certainly got him right in the mush. I think he's got him with the shoulder. I know the left, uh, the right arm appears to go up. But I think that's all right, Eddie. Certainly a smack across the face from Bybee. He'll put it on report. But I think when we see that slow motion, He's the man that's a culprit, Ricky Bybee. He's on report, and the officials have got it right. Well, it that's the one. Bang there, and then the, the, the worst thing from Adamson's point of view is the leg, and I don't think it's the one that is taped. It was the other leg that doubled up underneath him. Well, it was a great hit. Talao lined him up, and obviously with a slap across the face for a split second, Adamson would have thought, I'll get a penalty, and then he just ran into a brick wall. And uh, Matt Adamson is limping, that's the fifth penalty Leeds have had, Saints have yet to have one. It's McDermott for the Rhinos, and he almost breaks through. It's a great wrestle between those three. Diskin, Adamson, looks as though he's OK. Clattered as he went down, though, he collided with the legs of Fozard. It's with Maguire again, Mathers, senior, quick hands, Marcus by another... Bye-bye, Marcus. Second try. Leeds past the 30 mark. 18th try for Marcus Bye this year. Two last week against London as well. What a game he's having. It's bye-bye St. Helens, I can tell you that. The ability of his senior to upload the game again. the Rhinos. You know, there's been two little touches of brilliance Marcus from the, the centre Keith senior. Which, okay, he doesn't seem as though he's doing much, but look at this. Bang! As soon as he sucked in the winger, he knew that the ball was going to go to this man. This is try number two for Marcus Bai. The Rhinos are unstoppable. And yes, Eddie. It is bye-bye to Saints, they're never going to get back from this. You would not think so, not even St Helens. Who have produced so many great comebacks in the past. Surely not even the Saints can recover from this. But when you talk about Saints, you never say never. Sinfield safe with the boot. 32 to Leeds. Zip. To St. Helens. This is incredible. Is there a doubt about the last pass? We'll soon see here. No, I think that's all right. Not much in it. Either way, it was a quality step, wasn't it? But equal to that step and the four and points he picked up was that little offload from Senior. Well, Leeds Rhinos finished top of the pile, 1967-68. 69, 70 and 72, the last time, the last time that they won the championship here at Headingley. Phil Clark, they look in this mood, odds on to go top of the pile at the end of 2004. And the last time they had a home record similar to this, they did actually make it two to the grand final. That was back, of course, in 1998, but unfortunately they lost in the big one to Wigan. And uh, you talk about... A St. Helens possible comeback, I fear really that uh, they'll struggle to even hang on to uh, Leeds. The 32 points behind on the scoreboard, the 5 0 down on the penalty count, and Leeds have just brought on Rob Burrow. Well, when you've been defending for uh, almost half an hour, which probably seemed like half a week to the St. Helens players at the moment, the last thing you want to see is a speed straight of the dummy half position, but that's what Leeds will have in the next few minutes. Remarkably, Rob Burrow is packing down in the second row of the scrum there. Oh, this just, is Darren Albert. I'm just going to say, Eddie, you'd have to be the smallest second row I've ever seen in the game. <laughs>
doesn't seem to matter what number they have on their backs these days, they are interchangeable, multi-talented, these players. But it's a good move by Tony Smith, the Rhinos coach. Oh, that's a great ball! Forward. Oh, forward, he says. It was. It was delayed, sadly, a little bit too late. It, it opened them up. It certainly did, it was a well-delivered. He sucked in, there was a huge gap there, but I'm afraid they hung on to it a little bit too long here. From that angle, it looks OK, but from this angle... Oh, well. It looks OK as well. <laughs> well. Maguire's here again, he's escaped Gunati. He's given it to Marcus Bai. Great tackle, Darren Albert. Wilkin could have been penalised for a flop then. And somebody has shouted at Carl Kirkpatrick. And St Helens have their first penalty of the night. Well, I'm not so sure, right? Well, well, it was a gesture, and it wasn't a rude gesture, he just put his hand up. Well, if that's the case, then the game will never get started. Every player makes a gesture, though I do remember... Mr Ganson yeah. and Rob Burrow. Oh, that's shocking. I'm sorry, but that is not top-quality rugby league football. He was stood in a line, took his eyes off the football. They're just blitzed. You talk about losing the plot, Eddie. St. Helens look as though they didn't have one. Knock on by Wilkin, that was unfortunate. He went for the interception. A little bit too nonchalant there from the prop forward, Barry McDermott. He's impressed with this fella, John Wilkin. Brought into the limelight, of course, when Kieran Cunningham was out injured. Did a fine job as well. Maguire pops it up to Senior. And Senior, not tackled, now he is, finished off. Fozard all over him, here goes Burrow. This is McKenna. You know, a few eyebrows were raised when Tony Smith said that he was resting Keith Senior against, Keith Senior against London last week. It's done in the world of good. Burrow tried to duck underneath the challenge he knew was coming in from Gilmore there. Couldn't get away from him. This is Sinfield, a stab down the line, looking for Chef Walker. It's picked up by Cummins, but it will be a knock-on. Knock-on against Chef Walker. Quick thinking, though, wasn't it? Kevin Sinfield, little kick on that blind side. And again, we see them crucify them. Got to it all right. Well, I've just had enough to make sure it dislodged away. Boom. Another ledge off. St. Helens players will be thinking, what do we have to do? 32 nil in 32 and a half Woo! minutes. Here, here, Cunningham and Bybee for Saints. On to Edmondson. And the metres gained by Leeds there, up and almost to 1,300. That's all for Saints. And handling errors. It's not helping them, but they managed there to hang on bit of a shape problem. of John Wilkin. Bit of a problem there for Barry McDermott. Oh, what a great... Oh, he's got him for offside. Tackled him without the football is ah. the referee's version of events there. Well, they certainly see... You can see that defensive line. Well, that looked all right. If the man's receiving the... He's got him for taking the man out before he received the ball. I'm not so sure about that. He had a chance to get that. Willie Poaching, all he had to do was tackle. Hooper certainly had a chance to get that ball. Barry McDermott has moved off the field as you watch that. He has uh, blood streaming from a head wound, so he's replaced by Wayne McDonald as Mark Edmondson drives it in here for the Saints. They need something before half-time. Mason! They need something for their own self-respect as much as anything else. Cunningham waits. Long pass to Wellens. Here is Hooper. And Hooper attacking... And it's picked up by Walker. Well, it just shows you when you're lacking that confidence, you're just not getting it right. He thought he was going to be the dummy runner, then they offloaded it to what should have been the dummy runner. He 
knew exactly where that ball should have been going. And now the big fella has ended the fray, McDonald. And the referee wants a word now with Ricky Bybee again. Brian Noble. I think Ian Millwood must feel like King Canute at the minute. He's getting his feet wet, definitely. And I don't think he's going to hold the tie back either. Even if he thinks he might, sometimes it happens. You go into free fall, it's really, really difficult to uh, turn it around until you get to half time. You just an element of damage limitation. What you don't need is penalties. What you need to do is slow leads down somehow and, and take away their vigor and their excitement. It's a difficult ask. You know, they're a little bit like rabbits in the headlights at the moment. Every little thing's going against them, and everything little is going leads as well. Leads have this territory because of knees in the back by Ricky Bybee. This is Adamson! Adamson still! Somehow they bring him down via Cunningham's tackle. It's with Diskin. It's McDonald! He scores against his former club. Wayne McDonald, six foot seven. And he needed every inch of the six foot seven then. He just stretched out and plunked it over the line. He's got the height, certainly got the strength. This is the penalty. It's amazing. Bybee got put a report for the slap on the face. Gets away with a real knees in the ribs job. But what a great effort from Adamson. Again, the inside pass from Matt Diskin. He's having a wow of a game with Diskin. And it's that man again. Just short. Same challenge. First and second marker. They've got no idea what this Diskin is doing. He's become the magician. Well, Wayne McDonald was named as 18th man. Andrew Duneman went down sick. And McDonald stepped up to the plate, came off the bench last week and scored a try. He's done the same again. That's seven from seven for Sinfield. 38 points to nil. I take my hat off to Phil Clark. He tipped this at the start of the match. Phil, you know something about the game? Yeah, it must be a hangover from the stag party last weekend. <laughs> Do you know, I, after those three early tries that Leeds scored, I thought I'd just look at the Saints' response, really, and, and just see which players came back quickly for the kickoff and put their hand up to take the ball up. And, do you know, the whole squad did, they did a good effort. And, to be honest, they weren't that far off really where they needed to be, but they couldn't convert any chances into tries. Wellens' try was denied, and then they had one from forward pass. And every single opportunity that Leeds have had with the ball close to the opponent's line or even deep down, they've converted into a try. This looks like it could be another. It could be because they've got Maguire and he couldn't take the pass in. This well, will be brought back for the scrum. Well, Maguire did the wrong thing. We mentioned the fact that A.D. Gardner overrun his centre, Willie Talau, earlier in this game. And he left it far too long, did Matt Diskin. And Maguire knows that he just had a step in front. Maybe yes. mentally he was thinking that they were, they were kicking the conversion already. I they would so. not have caught him. No, and his hat-trick, by the way, in the first half here has come in seven minutes. 18-10 at the JJB Stadium, Wigan leading Castleford. What a battle that's becoming, though, with Danny Maguire and uh, the Volcano at Bradford. We have seen some wonderful try-scoring efforts this year. Wellens to Mason, wide, oh, and on the bounce, and it came off, they got it to Gardner. And that ball flew out in the tackle by Walker. Here is Wellens again. And Wellens is tackled by Wayne McDonald. Cunningham. Mason. Halted 20 metres away from the Leeds line. The worst thing for St. Challenge is the fact that, remember, we said that Leeds, they were 18 points up against London, put the cue on the rack. And that is one thing that Tony Smith, their coach, was absolutely furious about. And saying that, he will be driving it to them in the half-time break and saying, anybody puts a cue on the rack, they won't be playing next week. Well, what is also so good as far as Leeds are concerned is they have virtually a full, fully fit squad from which to choose. There's only David Ferner who's not available. And he did actually say yesterday, Tony Smith, that Wayne McDonald was very unlucky not to be playing in this match from the start. Here he is again now, and he scored a try in this first half as well since he's come on as a substitute. So he has competition for places, he has fit athletes, it's looking good. 19 missed tackles by the Saints. And here goes Cummins down the wing. 
Infield it goes to poaching. Brilliant. Walker. Burrow. Tackled by Fasamalu. Quick play of the ball. It's on the last. Poaching. Burrow again. Adamson gets the ball away. Picked up. In defence by Albert. Had to be there. Just failed on the last pass. But you can't blame them. 38 points in front. You've got a chance here, Arm. With only seconds remaining, they run the power play. With such a commanding lead, you can do what you want out there. And that's virtually the story of the first 40 minutes. Leeds have just done that. They've done what they wanted. There's the half-time siren, and St Helens will say, thank goodness for that. And Leeds and their supporters will rise to their team here. 38 points to nil, six tries in a truly scintillating first half. Leeds are underway, eyeing records, I would think, all over the place. We already have the equal Super League tries in a season holder in Danny Maguire. And how many more will he get? How many more will Leeds get? Can St. Helens gain the respectability that this great club, to be fair, and this great team, that they really do deserve? But remember, it was 56-10 at Nosy Road in April. And as I said right at the start of the commentary tonight, the Rhinos fans have had this date ringed in red on their calendars all year. This is the night, they say, for revenge. Well, we shall see. Remember that night that Tony Smith, uh, we interviewed him after that game, the Road, and he said, bad day at the office. I look forward to what Ian Millwood would say. But we've still got 40 minutes. It looks maybe impossible, but who knows? St. Helens are capable of doing anything. Well, you would say with Long, Gleason, Sculpthorpe, Higham and company, it is Difficult. possible. Difficult. Tonight, it's mission impossible. The ball was spirited away then by McDonald to Sinfield. And Sinfield makes some more good metres down the middle for he's tackled by Mason. Rob Burrow now finds Willie Poaching. Good tackle by Fasavalu. Better defence as well, the Saints coming up as a unit. Great ball from Adamson to Burrow, here is Walker. Much better defence though. And Walker's being shuttled towards the sideline. He manages to save himself with help from Cummins. This is the last tackle. It's with Maguire and a crossfield kick. And seniors after this. And he flicks it. And it gets to buy and it comes back in field. But St. Helens have it. Let's get down to the sideline. Bill Arthur is alongside the one Leeds Rhino who is injured tonight, David Ferner. And David, this must make pretty impressive watching. Very, very strong half by Leeds. I think uh, you know Tony's obviously happy. Uh, the game plan. I think the players' completion in the in the game we, we, uh, has been fantastic, uh, especially in the first 20 minutes. And I think that's taken a little bit of petrol out of Saints. Well, yes, and they really haven't had the ball to, to play with. Certainly not for the first 20 minutes, and that's when the damage was done, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, as I said before, completion is a big thing. You can have a lot of the ball in the first 20 minutes, but if you're not completing your sets of six, um, it's no use having that much ball. But I, I think, you know, just having a look in that first half, I think we were something like, uh, you know, eight from eight uh, sets of six. So uh, very pleased for us. I think we're, we're looking for a big defensive effort in this second half. And pretty much uh, the same with the ball uh, as we did in the first half. Now, the feeling was that at London last week, you're in this big situation, not quite as uh, a clear a lead, but certainly you put your cue on the rack. Yeah, we, we you know obviously looked at London, but um, you know these sort of games, you know these are the ones that you play for, and, and uh, we did put the queue in the rack, so to speak, against London. But uh, to London's credit, they come back. But you now again, we've, we've shown great character uh, today, and uh, you know Saints are a good side. Got a few players missing, but uh, gee, we've, we've capitalised on every, every bit of possession we've got. Thanks, David. Just a, a word, Eddie, from uh, Ian Millwood, who uh, told me that. Really, things went off, went wrong, virtually from the kickoff, and he's just about right there because the ball went out on the full, and there was no coming back from that. And Ricky Bybee is involved again in another incident that needed a word from referee Carl Kirkpatrick. Well, he's on report, and that's the second high challenge since then. Well, I think he's very fortunate on the same player as well. Adamson puts himself on report, 
He also gave away a penalty for dropping with the knees. He's done that. How much does an official have to be convinced? Does he have to hurt? Does he have to hurt someone first? Senior, great ball, Maguire, and hauled down from behind by Mark Edmondson. And the crowd here are out to party tonight. You can probably hear them in the background. They're Tony Smith's Barmy Army. And it's with Sinfield. Now McDonald. McDonald stands. Eventually, he is hauled to ground. You know, Steve, I think this 40 minutes that's underway now is probably Tony Smith's most important 40 of the season because he's such a perfectionist, he'll want them to kick on and nil the Saints here. He You're will right. not want any relaxation by his team. You're right, Eddie. I was sat in the stand at London last Sunday and he walked past me with only second remaining of that game. He knew it was oh, second the try. Easy. Second try for McDonald. And St Helens' agony continues and Leeds' ecstasy goes on. Good effort, but poor defence by St Helens. As you say, Eddie Tony Smith. 40 minutes he has to prove. This is the opportunity to prove to the rest of the rugby league world that Leeds do have that killer punch. I know a couple of weeks ago I mentioned the fact that they didn't have the punch but they had the duty. And Tony Smith, the next time that I saw him, he introduced himself as Judy. He's got a good sense of humour and he'll be smiling all the way with the try here from McDonald. Good work from Diskin. What a wonderful game Diskin is having. McDonald in for his second try. Jubilation all around. And the noise underneath us in the south stand. It's amazing. You cannot hear yourself think. Sinfield faultless with the boot so far. Seven from seven. Make that eight from eight. And it's 44-0 to the Leeds Rhinos at Headingley. They lost all four to Leeds at St Helens in 2003, including an extra time Challenge Cup semi-final. 2002, St Helens won all four. 2004, until tonight, Saints were dominant. But right now, at 44-0, not even you would put your house on a St Helens comeback. Oh, you builders out there, forget about it. <laughs> Let's get down to Phil Clark. Eddie, the scoreboard's kept pace with the clock, but Saints can't seem to keep up with the, the Leeds Rhinos in this form. And you know, I, I don't really think that the next 40 minutes will have too big a bearing on the rest of the season. Obviously, there's a sort of uh, internal pride if, if St Helens can get over the try line. And Leeds, of course, want to deny St Helens from scoring, but realistically, this game's won now, and it's all about just how well Leeds can continue to play. And how many Leeds will score because here goes Diskin, and the performance from this young man tonight has been quite outstanding. And the support play from Diskin then was equal to his performance in the first half. And he deserves that try. That's 48, and with Sinfield's kick to come, they will rattle up the half century. And the league players know how important this try is to the league's hooker. Wonderful support play, neat little offload there from Adamson. And not surprisingly, they work the short side, back on the inside, maybe a hint that the pass from coaching was a 50-50. But look at the jubilation on the face of all the Leeds players. They raised their arms in total respect to a man who has engineered this wonderful victory. He takes the accolades. And rightly so, something to cheer about, certainly. Well, certainly a special night for us on Sky Sports with this our 500th commentary, but it is developing into a very special night for the Rhinos. 50 points to nil. And remember, last week, St Helens scored late on in the game against Hull to prevent their first ever Super League whitewash. It will take a big effort to prevent the whitewash tonight. Incredible, 50 points up, only eight minutes into the second stanza. And I'm looking at Ian Proctor, our statistician, he's looking through the books desperately because he knows records are going to be broken all over the shop tonight. 
Well, the club record defeat for St Helens, 78-6 at Warrington, 1909. Is it going to be one of those nights for St Helens? Steve, we talked about the importance of this 40 minutes. Oh, here they come again. They can't even talk about things. Mathers, Mathers is over again. Mathers is over again, and Leeds are just cutting them to ribbons. And Tony Smith, he might not be showing much emotion there, but I'll tell you something, that man is in, in ecstasy. We said it was a big 40 minutes for Leeds. In the context of this season for St Helens, Stevo, how big is this defeat going to be? What will the repercussions be? It's going to be extremely difficult. They can, of course, St Helens, look into the boardroom. They do have a wonderful piece of silver on the shelf. But if you've got defence like this, you'd have to say that it's got no chance for the Saints to add onto the boardroom shelf. Poor defence, need little offload, Mathers from fullback chiming in. It is just a training run. We made the point. Jubilation, and why not? You know, 1972 since the last time they won the championship. Could this be the year? A perfect 10 out of 10 for Kevin Sinfield. And he will be eyeing the Super League gold kicking record tonight as well. 56 points to nil. Richard Mathers, the latest of the Leeds try scorers. Well, it's just going from one end to the other. St. Challenge come back, kick off. Leeds get possession and Leeds score. Ten goals from Kevin Sinfield tonight for the first time in his career. Here comes Ward. Ooh. He ran straight through Keith Mason. Well, the Saints they fans. want 100 leads, I'll tell you. Lower Titi has got Maguire with him. Maguire will get the fourth, will he? Great tackle, Darren Albert, and he's lost the ball. Well, that Great is tackle from Darren Albert, that was. Well, that is justice done because the pass I felt was forward to Maguire. Wonderful effort, Darren Albert, and to be fair to Albert, he's had a bit of a nightmare, but this pass from Lartici, to me, looks forward. It certainly was. But Darren Albert has been all at sea in the centre position. He has saved a certain try. Maybe Maguire paid the price of just having a little bit of a look behind him instead of getting the ears back, nose in front. You'd have scored that one, Eddie, if that's the case. Darren Albert's tackle there just for the time being, preserving Paul Newlove's proud record of 28 tries in a season that at this moment still stands with Maguire's 28 this year as Super League's record total by an individual. Brian Noble, I don't know what St Helens can do. They'll be looking for the final siren. They're, they're trying hard, you can see that. They're getting done with little plays, little short balls. And it's Leeds' is vigour, I keep using that word, but when they carry the ball, they're knocking people over, and when the ball's being carried at them, they're rolling their sleeves up and sticking their shoulders in the mid of St Helens, and Wanda, you can see they've got their bit between the teeth, they're like a runaway horse. Saints need to find some kind of corralling here, or it's going to be a, a, a longer night than normal. I know you professional coaches and players never talk publicly about revenge, but will Leeds have thought about the cup defeat, about the 56-10 humiliation at Nosy Road. No. Will they have thought about that? I don't think so. We certainly don't know our place. They'll be talking about playing well against a very good team, St Helens, and, and winning the game and looking at the competition as it is. The, the problem with, with talking about revenge and, and those kind of things is you're only never going to be even. If you get even with somebody, they need to be ahead, and, and this is the only way you can do that. And, of course, there's no trophy on offer here tonight and there's no trophy on offer in the Super League until the 16th of October and that wonderful, wonderful night at Old Trafford in the Grand Final. We're going to have an eye on that, 24-14, they lead Castleford who are still stuck at the foot of the table, Castleford, despite winning last week for only the second time. This is Hooper, now it's with Wellens, Roby, back to Talau. It's not going right, no. he knows it. Start the bus. Let's go home and let's get out of here, will be what Ian Milward will be saying. 
Brian Noble has said they're trying their damnedest. Jim Drovey trying to get the ball out wide, went behind the winger. There's very little you, you can do apart from, uh, well, just try to stop the damage. As Tony Smith, as we mentioned in the first half, said it was a bad day at the office. It's uh, It's been a terrible one for Ian Millwood and their players. Their defensive line has been all at sea. And at times, the thing that surprised me more than anything is that they've looked lost. There's no one seemed to lead them out there. And with a scoreline like that, it's not surprising. Everything's coming off for Leeds, even the, the bounce ball by McKenna. 27 St. Helens missed tackles tonight. Danny Ward, oh, straight through Cunningham. That's another problem that Saints have another had. Another penalty, Fozar trying desperately to slow them down. It's all they've got left. Right over the top. Danny Ward has played his part as well. well Carl Kirkpatrick hasn't had too many crucial decisions to make, has he? One or two maybe on high shots. This is McDonald. Look at Ward looking for work yet again. It's with Mathers, and here now is Maguire, and he pops it up to Senior. And senior is wrestled to the ground by Hooper, and he fell over him as he tried to play the ball, and it's disc in! It's Rob Burrow, clattered Rob Burrow by Gilmore. Just got that in time as well, Gilmore. It is no surprise to anybody watching, and they've got them for offside. A little bit of relief for St. Challenge. Can they get through a set of six? Can they get into a position where they can apply the pressure? Little in goal kick, just so they can get successive sets of six there. All offside. Steve, you know in uh, lopsided schoolboy matches when young children are playing and the score's 56 or 60 points to nil, the referee will very often blow the whistle early just to uh, put the team out of the misery, really. He knows it's not fair. It's almost that case here tonight, isn't it? Leeds just toying with St. Helens. Certainly, uh, in his time at St. Helens, Ian Millwall's had a great influence. He's not just coached the moves, but he's coached them with character and an attitude. They don't give in, and certainly tremendous effort still being shown here now as we're almost going to enter the last quarter of this match, but they're being completely outclassed, and uh, there's very little they can do about this tonight. It's the fourth tackle. We're going to increase the lead against Castleford. It could be a very bad weekend for St. Helens, this. They could end up fifth in the table at the end of it, drop from second to fifth in two weeks. Roby dabs the kick through, gathered in by Mathers, and he gets it back into the field of play. One thing I will say, Steve, oh, that end that Leeds are running away from is populated by the St Helens supporters. It must be very, very difficult for them to watch this, but not one of them is leaving. Not one of them is heading for the exit, they're all staying on to the bitter, bitter end. Well, that's the one thing about rugby league crowds, there's very few that do that. Real rugby league supporters, even though they get a real shellacking, they know that there's been qualities produced by this Leeds Rhinos. They know in their own hearts that earlier in the season at Knowlesley Road, you keep mentioning it, it was uh, Saints who really gave Leeds a thrashing. They're enjoying rugby league football, that's the beautiful thing about rugby league fans. And they will also know, the St Helens supporters, that Leeds Rhinos have to go to Nosey Road again in September. 56 0 though here tonight. And this is Gardner, but Walker. He's been a giant in defence. It's quite a night for Roby to come into the action off the bench, isn't it? Here's Hooper. Great defence from Leeds. They want to be the team that nils Saints for the first time in the Super League. And Saints with a proud nine year record to try and preserve. Albert, ball down, this is the last enterprise from St Helens, but the kick, I was going to say, is just too deep, but Mathers flicked the ball dead, because Roby was right behind him. Well, I thought you were going to put the mocker on him yet again, remember you were saying exactly the same thing at Hull. Yeah, and but that was about five minutes to go. And no sooner had you just got it out of your mouth, Saints went in for that try, and a youngster watching. That's the reason why you should never allow the ball to bounce, it can go anywhere. That was sporting from Roby, he pushed him 
in the back, but he held on to the jersey to make sure he didn't disappear over the, uh, the wall. What defence is that? It's been like a brick wall. First goal line dropout, and Cunningham attacking them, and here is Fuzzard. That's the first time we see Cunningham run from dummy half. Wellens, it comes wide to Roby, and Roby! Roby, Diskin holds him up on his back. What fantastic defence. He's gone to the screen to confirm it. Well, it's no try. He's looking for a knock-on over the far side. No try, but... Definitely no try. Magnificent defence from Matt Diskin. Was it ever. Do you think he wants the watch tonight? And that well, was a knock-on. Certainly lost it. Definitely lost it, playing the ball. We just saw, a few moments ago, a little bit of spark from Kieran Cunningham. We know exactly what he's capable of. Got so them into a good position. It's going to go over the other side for the scrum, for the knock-on. Well, one would expect so. Certainly no try. It'll be the second no try that St. Helens have had and to endure this... throughout this game. Well, Roby did really well. This is another youngster who's a, a great talent for the future. 18 years of age, he's featured in the last four. He was one of the more experienced heads, and I think it was Nick Fossard who dropped the ball at the play the ball. You're right, James Roby. Very impressive. And all top quality professional players will tell you at one time during their career that on the end of a real good hiding. His senior, one blight on Leeds night, might be any injuries they pick up, Bill. Well, even that looks as though it's going to go their way, because just a moment ago, Matt Adamson was sitting on the sidelines with a big block of ice on his knee, but it looks as though he's going to come back. Here goes Chef Walker, and here is Rob Burrow. Good tackle, though, by Keith Mason. What is ever? I mean, it, the front forward went back, caught the three quarters. This is McDermott. Diskin the dummy half, it goes wide to Maguire, it goes wide to Senior, and further wide to Marcus Pye! And Marcus Pye gets his hat-trick! Only just as well. He was very close to the whitewash then, was Marcus Pye. Remember the first try he scored, it was only a millimetre in, whether his left foot had hit the line. But a hat-trick hat on his debut against London for Marcus Pye, this is his second. Ooh. Again, the defence, squeezing in, Chalau, left with, would you believe, four on one. Not two on one, four on one. Four blue and amber against one red and white. Chalau could do nothing about that. And again, they have really just squeezed the St. Challenge defence on their right-hand side. It's doom and gloom for the Red and Whites. Well, all they can say, too, is it has been a bad night at the office. Now, 10 out of 10 so far for Kevin Sinfield. The all-time Leeds Super League record for goal-kicking. 13 in a match, held by Yistin Harris. And Brian Noble raises an eyebrow at that name. Kevin Sinfield. We'll catch you. <laughs> Sinfield hits the post. 10 from 11 for Sinfield and the South Standers boo him. 60 for Leeds. Typical, isn't it? They're expecting so much. But how many times have these faithful supporters underneath us, Eddie? They keep coming up to us, you know, is it another false door? Well, on, this this form, on this form now. On this form, Leeds can take on anybody. But you have to play well on the 16th of October as well as yeah. at the end of July. Yeah, Brian that's... Noble, you know that better than most. It's fantastic that Leeds are doing this, but the night that it matters is the 16th of October at the Theatre of Dreams. And the evenings that mattered a couple of weeks before then. And we see Leeds are playing with so much confidence now. Everybody's supporting. It's amazing how much energy you get when you have a comp play like this. Here they go again, they just 
punching holes at will. But yeah, it's about playing well in the playoff time. It's about playing well at the end of the season. And who knows? Though you wish this upon anybody, but a couple of injuries may change things completely around. We're still, believe it or not, nine games to go in the Super League. So indeed, if they recreate this kind of form, there'll be a chance. Don't worry about that. Poaching. Lower Titi. That's the 64. Lower Titi with the latest lead strike. Well, if this was a boxing match, the referee would have called time out and taken St. Helens off the field. It is cruel what is happening to them. The only trouble is, Eddie, that after three minutes, you get the chance to sit in your corner and uh, regroup. Not in this game, you don't. There's no place to hide. They're falling off the tackles. Great effort, though, from coaching. Back on the inside. They're just out on their feet, St. Helens. It is a convincing win, an easy win for the Rhinos. But I know one thing that Tony Smith, he will be composed. He won't get carried away with this. As Brian Noble said, he knows that they've still got a long way to go. Well, if you remember when they lost 56-10, Tony Smith wasn't pulling any trees up. He wasn't kicking anything. He was just saying, well, we'll come back and we'll play them at Headingley and we'll see what happens. And it's clickety-click for Leeds, 66 nil. Well, that was an eye that Tony Smith probably just thought to himself as they were driving over the Pennines that he doesn't have a dog, thankfully. Just a procession now. Three girls enjoying it. And this massive crowd here. They've seen some wonderful skills on offer, but... The reality is, Eddie, is that this St. Helens defence has not been up to scratch. It hasn't, but at the same time, you can take nothing away from the way Leeds have played this evening. Everything they've tried has come off. Every run, as Brian Noble said, they've punched holes up the middle. And the missed tackles from St. Helens, well, 34 missed tackles, you cannot win matches with a statistic like that. But I come back to the point when we saw the try before the last one. What does all this mean for St Helens between now and the end of the season? Well, you wouldn't say that it was disaster, because they've got time to regroup. These are the last 17 standing, according to Ian Milbert. Well, we've often said it. The team that picks up the trophy and grand final day at the Old Trafford ground is usually the side that has got through without a lot of injuries that have the depth that they can put it in. You've already mentioned that Leeds have got plenty of that. Only Ferner is the one that's on the injured list at the moment. And it's a great position to be in. I know that our guest Brian Noble wishes that that would come back to Bradford. And maybe it will, Brian, that that will come your way. You'll get most of your players back when it comes to the playoffs. It's all about crunch time, and don't think that Ian Millward isn't thinking that either. He's had the confidence to go from 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, or even 1st. It's amazing how much can change in a few weeks. Ian Millward's smart, he won't get carried away with this performance. It's one of those nights where you just things haven't done right for him from 2nd run to the last second. Now, he knows that he'll regroup this team, and this team will still be a force at the end of the season. Leeds have to maintain their form. They've done it all year. They look really sharp tonight. They look strong, they look skillful, they look uh, a handful. And the one thing that has impressed me, because we often see when a side races to a, a convincing lead, that they go individually. Leeds haven't done that. They've played as a unit, haven't they? That'll be the pleasing thing for them. Everybody's moved around the ball carrier. Everybody's in a position to field offloads and close up on the 50-50 balls on the ground and been fielded by Leeds players. And that's the element of confidence and push for each other, pushing on each other's shoulders, expecting something to happen. Well, and just picks up a little chip forward. And St. Helens will try and come again from deep in their own half of the field. Phil Clark, can you put this Leeds performance into some sort of perspective for us? 
I think the only fear maybe for Tony Smith, and I don't he's the type of guy who worries about things in life, is that maybe, you know, they peaked a little bit too soon. I remember, I think it was in July last season when Bradford went through a bad patch, lost a series of games, but certainly turned it around and, uh, and won the big prize on the big day. I think it, the, the benefit that Tony Smith has, though, probably here is at least that there's a, a large squad and tremendous competition for places, and that will probably keep everybody on the toes and, and prevent any complacency or even form slump. And on the other side of the coin, remember, as Cummins is cut down by Darren Albert, remember that for the playoffs, which St Helens, I think, are just about certain to qualify for, no matter what place, whether it's second, third, fourth or fifth, for the playoffs, Sean Long will return. There'll be no Martin Gleeson now. He has signed for Warrington today. But Long will come back, and boy, do they need him. Certainly need the guidance, but even with the ability of a player like Sean Long, you need to build a, on the ground and make sure that you've got that foundation. I'm afraid that Saints haven't done that. I made the point before the kickoff that the one thing that Saints did in the first half of this season was the power that they had up front. Fozard, Mason, Cunningham. They were absolutely superb. It's a break. It is a break. And it is by Fastavalu. But Leeds will not let them through. This is Wilkin, and it comes in field to Jason Hooper, who finds Gilmore. And Gilmore strings it up. Marcus By finishes him off, but this is promising for St Helens. Cunningham attacking the line. Here is Edmondson. Four tackles gone. Ruby fires the pass to Cunningham. Here is Hooper, back to Cunningham. Job here for the Leeds defence to do, it's with Roby. Roby! Held up again on the last tackle. Cunningham, way to dummy half, back it comes to Hooper. And Hooper will hoist the kick wide. Darren Albert, oh, they put. Fasabalu just couldn't take the pass in. That will be the turnover, it's a knock-off. Ten minutes they have to preserve this proud record that they have never, never been nilled in the Super League. And St Helens asking here why the referee didn't go to the video referee, but I think Mr Kirkpatrick has got it right. Yeah. Well, that went backwards. That went forwards. But the one that went forward, yes, he had another go at it, didn't he, Darren Albert? Well, they still got just over ten minutes to correct that. They don't want to be nil. No side does. Maguire has made another break. He's got Burrow in support. And Burrow, well, he bamboozled him with the run. Another wonderful try-saving try tackle from Darren Albert. Maguire, though. No, he's short. He's short, I think. What a great effort from Darren Albert. That's the second try that Darren Albert has saved. What an effort. He's deliberately knocked the ball. It's no try. It's a knock-on. It'll be head and feed. But who to? Leeds? Well, of course, it was Darren Albert deliberately knocks the ball away. Well, that's the decision the video referee has to make, or was he playing the man and not the ball? No, he went for the ball as far as I'm concerned. Watch the arm. Deliberately, bang, knocks the ball down as far as I'm concerned. I'm not the video referee, not that it makes any difference. Yeah, to me, de deliberately knocked on. Maguire thought he was in for try number four. So this should be, in your opinion, Knock on, no try, scrum, attack. Yes. It shows what we know. Darren Albert, though, a wonderful effort. That's a long-range run twice he's had to make, and then he crucially makes the tackle that forces the error from Maguire, but I must say... Outstanding, but uh, you've got to take your hat off to him now, Darren Albert. You know, at 66-0, he runs back 45 metres, prevents one try from Barrow, then prevents the try. It, that's amazing. Shows you the character of that man. Take a bow, Darren Al. Fastest man in rugby league now, that's official. And he's proved it tonight. He's come from nowhere twice to stop certain yep. lead scores. Yep. Now Leeds will be desperate to try to force St. Helens, keep them down in their own quarter. 
You'd have to also say that St. Helens' kicking game has been very, very poor, but they've never been in a position to utilise it. Well, I was chatting to Paul Skolthorpe in the car park before this match, and he says it looks like a long job that he's got to get back to full fitness. Gardner is tackled brilliantly by little Rob Burrow. Tallow, Wellens, credit the Saints, you know, they're not giving this up. They do not want to be nil. Roby, Gilmore, the kick up in the air again. One for Marcus Bai, he misses it. It's play on on the last tackle, it's knocked forward. And it's play on, and this is Mathers. He allowed the advantage at Carl Kirkpatrick. I'm not so sure that Ian Millwood and the Saints players, but there was one before that that looked to me as though it was a definite knock on. He has allowed the advantage to the chagrin of this uh, St. Challenge outfit. As Eddie keeps mentioning, they will want to erase that blot, that zero on the right hand side of the scoreboard. Well, normally on our live matches we have to wait till around about five minutes of the game remaining before we get the name of the man of the match I don't think we need to worry tonight it's somebody in the lead side and I won't just a minute oh, senior I wonder Dave Hadfield who are you going to give it to tonight well not a great deal to say about St Allen's uh, apart from a couple of wonderful try saving tackles from Darren Albert but stars all over the field for Leeds Matt Diskins had a wonderful game Keith Seedham might not have scored but he's had a hand in almost everything Marcus Bai's been terrific as well Kevin Sinfield's got some votes up there but in the end we've gone for somebody so much talent, so many watchers Danny Maguire, he really should have broken the record tonight it's only a matter of time before he does so Danny Maguire with the four tries gets the watch as man of the match here is Ricky Bybee, Leeds swarming around him, you'd think it was 6-0, not 66-0, Edmondson. I get back to that point about the fact that Leeds put the queue on the rack against London, and it was the last thing that St. Helens wanted to see. Maybe a convincing easy win down in the capital would have made Leeds just a little bit complacent. It really was a good kick up the backside for them last weekend, and they have come out and shown that they can finish a team off. Marcus Bai will play the ball to Richard Mathers and he will find Chris McKenna, who gives it to Francis Cummings. When you talk about St. Helens trying to score the try, the one other thing that Leeds will be looking for is that magical 7-0. 48-18, we're going to have beaten Castleford at the JJB Stadium. Here goes Wayne McDonald. Dumps it down to Rob Burrow. Cunningham was not going to let him get through. He could have been penalised then, Kieran Cunningham, but the referee lets them carry on. Senior! Senior is going to seal his perfect night with the try that takes Leeds to 70. 70 points to nil. Sheer quality and the ability yet again. There you see it on the right hand side of defence. Darren Albert, he's done ever so well. Save two would be tries for the Leeds outfit, but he has been left in no man's land far too many times in this game. It is a problem that Ian Millwood has to rectify. Take nothing away from the scorer. But they have created the overlap time and time again, Leeds. Mentioned a couple of tries ago, I think it was when Bai went in. The situation being is that they didn't just have one man overlap, they had four. Keith Senior, this is his 150th Leeds appearance tonight. His ninth try of the campaign. And Kevin Sinfield can make it the round dozen here. Well, players always love stats. They don't think about them too much when they're out there on the field, but if he sees the record equaling 13 goals against his name for Leeds in the Super League, he would be delighted. This could make it 12, with time to make it the Baker's dozen. He's missed it. So it stays at 70 points 
to nil. Phil Clark, you picked it, you tipped it. I take my hat off to you. I might have to have a drink every week if I uh, wrap it with that accurate with the predictions. I bet St. Tell's wishing uh, I hadn't got it so right, though. I mean, their season at the moment doesn't look to be going too well. They've got a tremendous endeavour, but very little to show for it here today. It's amazing, though, like Brian Noble said, a couple of injuries, a few more weeks, and all of a sudden, if you had to meet uh, the St. Tell's inside with maybe Paul Sculthorpe and Sean Long in it, maybe you wouldn't quite fancy your chances as much as you have done tonight. But Steve has touched on the point before, their early dominance in the season wasn't because Paul Sculthorpe or Sean Long were playing well or Martin Gleeson was scoring tries, it was because in the middle of the field, the front rowers and the forwards were dominant in the collision. They were playing the ball quick, and they were taking the team forward, and when in defence, they were controlling their opponents. They had great technique in the side, as you see there now, putting the man on his back, on the floor, and that allowed the de defensive line to get up quickly into the opponent's faces. That's all gone at the moment, but if they've had it once this season, I've no doubt they can find it again. Well, I've just totted it up, Eddie. It's uh, 104 points that St. Challenge have shipped in in the last two games. Incredible, isn't it? It is. Kick down the line, finds touch, beats Marcus by, but Kevin Sinfield still probing with two minutes to go. And Ian Millwood, well, he won't dwell on this too hard long, and I don't think Tony Smith will dwell on it too long either. But he will get great satisfaction from this. And so will the South Standers. That stand was sold out weeks ago for this meeting of the Saints. Been a wonderful celebration all round, Eddie, hasn't it? It has. Our 500th commentary and 70 points for Leeds, but St Helens won't remember the 500th commentary on Sky Sports for too long. Probably until the uh, coach door closes tonight and they're on their way home. A minute to go and St Helens could be nilled for the first time in Super League's nine-year history. What a tackle there on Hooper from all people, Danny Maguire. You know, a lot of people thought Maguire had a problem in defence, not after seeing that. Now then, the ball is spilled and St Helens will be nilled unless Leeds make a right porridge of this set of six. 30 seconds to go. It'll be a kick and chase, I feel. Will it be a Maguire kick over the top? McKenna. Still got chance. Watch for the kick. Listen, the South Standers, they've had the time of their lives. 10 seconds remaining. This will be it, the last tackle. Counting down to a very famous and, who knows, maybe significant win. There's the siren. It's all over. St Helens' agony is finished for the night. Leeds, 70 points to nil. Maguire with four tries wins the Tiso watch as man of the match. I'm sorry, with three tries. He could have had four. He could have had five. He might have had six. He ended up with three. Leeds ended up with 70 points. Leeds get two points, they stay well clear at the foot of the, t at the top of the table.